So for this part of the lesson, we're going to be taking a look at polynomial functions and their graphs, specifically the real zeros. Okay, so I'll define that and we will go from there. Okay, so as you look at this graph, we can see that the graph touches or crosses the x-axis one, two, three, four times. So in this graph, we have four real zeros. The graph either, like I said, touches or crosses the x-axis at four different spots. A couple other things to keep in mind here. We see that when uh, in between these dotted lines here, these dotted lines separate parts of the graph that are important. So for every x-intercept, that's what we call all these dots right here on the x-axis. These are all x-intercepts. We see that to the left of one x-intercept over here, we see that the graph of the function is below the x-axis. Okay, so that's an important thing to understand. That means that the function's values are negative. Below the x-axis means that y is negative. And then above the x-axis, we can see that in between these two zeros, these two x-intercepts, we see that the graph of y is above the x-axis. And so the connection I want you to make, and we may have talked about this before, is that when the function is above the x-axis, that means that the function's values are positive. Okay, so and, and you can notice here that, that in between zeros, the function either has to be above or below the x-axis, in between the zeros, okay? And so please make that connection. Above the x-axis means that, that y is greater than zero, and below the x-axis means that y is less than zero. I can't even come close to explaining how important that concept is and that connection is that you can make that, uh, that you can make between the graph of the function and then explaining what's going on with the function's values. So let's take a look at this definition and you should copy everything down here and be able to explain every part of this definition. All right, if f is a function, I think I stumbled over my words there, if f is a function and r is a real number for which f of r equals zero, it means the function's value is equal to zero it's for some value r, then r is called a real zero of f. And we've done a little bit of this on the calculator. When we're calculating the zeros of the functions, we're calculating their x-intercepts. Okay, so there's four things that are, four statements that are equivalent, and those are contained down here in this bottom yellow box. R is a real zero of the polynomial function. R meaning, that means also that R is an x-intercept. But the next connection is kind of a neat thing when we're talking about, well, what's the, what was the, what would the function look like? It would mean that x minus R is a factor of the function. Okay, and we'll get into that in the next slide. It also means that r is a solution to the equation f of x equals zero. So all these things mean the same thing, and when you understand the connection, it makes it, makes it almost impossible for me to ask you a question that you can't figure out, so I like that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's take a look. We're, we're going to find a polynomial function from its zeros. Okay, so we're going to build a polynomial function of degree 3, and the zeros are what we see here, negative 4, negative 2, and 3. Okay, we're not going to necessarily use our graphing calculator to determine this, but based on the slide prior to this one, we know that a 0 of negative 4 means that x minus that number, x minus negative 4, is a factor of the function. x minus negative 2 is another factor, and x minus 3 is another factor. So we have three factors of this function, and we have this a out here, which in this case it doesn't really matter what the a is, that would be, uh, a could be anything, it wouldn't change the fact that this function has zeros at negative 4, negative 2, and 3. Okay, so we could uh, multiply it out, we could see the degree is 3. We, uh, if a had a value of 1, we would see that the function looked like that. a having a value of 1 means that the leading term is positive. It also means that the graph of f of x goes up from left to right. And you can see that it crosses, it meaning f of x, crosses the x-axis at negative 4, negative 2, and 3. Okay. Another possibility for f of x might be if a is negative 1. If a is negative 1, we see that the function would look like that, going down from left to right. And then finally, another function that would satisfy the same uh, same information that we were given in the beginning, the zeros, 
would be if a were equal to 2. So we can see that, that um, the consistent parts of these graphs are the zeros at negative 4, negative 2, and 3. Negative 4, negative 2, and 3. For each one of these functions, negative 4, negative 2, and 3, they all cross the x-axis at those same places. Okay? So those are the consistent things about each of these graphs, but, but um, the actual function, you can build it by just knowing the zeros. Okay? Well, let's take a look at the next slide. Let's see what that one has to offer. So now we're going to crank it up just a notch and talk about a multiplicity of a factor. And so um, let's talk about that. Let's look at this definition. If x minus r to the mth power is a factor of a polynomial f and x minus r to the m plus 1 is not a factor, then r is called z a zero of multiplicity m of f. Well, that's kind of confusing. I'm reading that, and I don't really understand what that means when I, unless I just sit and think about it a little bit more. And I don't want to do that. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see what it actually means. Okay, so let's look at a concrete example. If I were you, I would not copy that down. So you probably already started copying that down. You may have already done that. That's okay. All right, but let's look at a real example. For the polynomial that we see here, and we have f of x, we've got... Um, we're trying to find all the zeros and their multiplicities, okay? And multiplicity means just how often does that factor present itself? How often does that factor, how many times I should say, is the factor there within that polynomial? Okay, well maybe that didn't even do it for you. Let's, let, let's multiply this out. If we have f of x equaling negative 2 times you know, we multiply all these factors out, we can see that x plus 1 is a factor three times because it's to the third degree, or to the third power. And then we also see that x, so we're going to bring it down here, x minus 3 occurs four times. Now, I don't even want to write all this, but I'm just showing you that uh, we have actually that many factors. So we would list those in a much cleaner way by saying basically that uh, let me erase all this stuff. We would say that, okay, where are we? Oh, uh, hold on a second. I have to go back to this. Okay, so if we look at 2 being a 0, it has a multiplicity. 2 is a 0 of multiplicity 2 because that's a typo. Sorry for that one. That is a typo. That should be a 1. So it changed that to a 1. 0. <laughs> oh my gosh. A disaster here. I don't want to redo this video. I'm already 8 minutes into it. So that should be a 1. And uh, you have to be smarter than these PowerPoints sometimes. Zero, 2 is a 0 of multiplicity 1 because the exponent on the factor is 1. So if whatever the exponent is, that's the multiplicity of that particular uh, 0. Okay, so... 2 is a 0, so in other words, 2 is an x-intercept of this function, and it's got multiplicity 1. And now I'm going to have to pause it again. Hold on. All right, I, I can't show you the slideshow and annotate at the same time, so I'm a bit limited here. But hopefully you've already crossed off that 2. This 2 is a 0 of multiplicity 1. And then negative 1 is a 0 of multiplicity 3 because the exponent on the factor x plus 1 is 3. And so probably pretty quickly you can see that we have multiplicity 4 on the other factor, okay, for the other 0. Okay, so that's all we're going to do. Well, what in the world does that mean when we're trying to graph this function? Well, what I'd like you to try to do right now is determine what the degree of this polynomial function is. Okay, see if you can figure that out. And I'm just going to tell you, pause the video if you want to try to uh, try to think of it. But the, the degree of this polynomial is 8. As you count up all the degrees of the, count up all the mul multiplicities of each zero, and we have an eighth degree polynomial. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how to graph based on the different multiplicities. So we're going to get into that next. Okay. So graphing this polynomial, f of x equaling x, you should write this down, times x minus 3 to the second power. Find the x and y intercepts of the graph first. Use the x intercepts. To find the intervals when f is above and and below the x-axis, and then any other points on the graph that are significant, connect all the points with a nice smooth continuous curve.
Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to notice that the x-intercepts are 0 and 3 because when we set each factor equal to 0, we see that we get 0 and 3. Okay, so those are the x-intercepts. Now the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0, so we can see that 0 is a y-intercept, so therefore this graph goes through the origin. Okay, well we kind of knew that. Not a big fan of this chart here, but nevertheless, we can see that when we construct a sine chart uh, here, we put the zeros right here, when x, the x values that cause the function to equal zero. So these are the zeros. This notation is going to go away so when I get back to my slideshow. And then on the interval from negative infinity to zero, we just choose any number and uh, any number in that interval, and we know that either f of x is going to be always positive or always negative on that interval. Okay, so that's kind of how we read the chart. On this interval here, from 0 to 3, we have to figure out, well, what's the value of the function? And then, uh, again, on, on the next interval, from 3 to infinity, so just like that original graph we talked about, the intervals are important to determine whether the function is above or below the x-axis. Now, in, in class, I'll show you a quicker way to do this, but for right now, this is a really important thing to be able to do, is to construct a sine chart, okay? And uh, so I need to, again, pause and get back to the, to the uh, PowerPoint. And here we go. We're going to choose, uh, we already chose negative 1 on the interval from negative infinity to 0. f of negative 1 is negative 16. So therefore, f is negative. The function is negative on the interval. It's always negative. It's below the x-axis. Okay, and then negative 1, negative 16 is the point. Uh, on the on the graph, okay, and then when we choose, let's say we choose one, f of one is four. Therefore, the graph of f is above the x-axis on that interval, and then uh, it corresponds to the point one four, okay. Now, if we choose again, we can choose any number. We want to choose the the easiest numbers to figure out what the values are of the function. So that's why we're choosing um, some strategic values for x. And uh, anyway, f of 4 is 4. Obviously, that's positive. So therefore, the function's values are, are positive, meaning that the function itself, the graph of it, is above the x-axis. And it actually goes through the point 4, 4. So we're going to take all this information, and we're going to construct the graph of the function f of x. Okay? And this is what the graph of f of x looks like. Notice that 0 has multiplicity 1, and that that 0 of 3 has multiplicity 2. And notice the differences in their x-intercepts. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay? And, uh, and here's how, it, you'll want to write this down. If r is a 0 of even multiplicity, then the sine of f of x doesn't change sine. And if 0 is an odd multiplicity, these are key concepts. Definitely write these down. Definitely um, Try to make the, the connections between what you're seeing here and the graphs. Okay, I'll move on. So behavior near a zero, I don't necessarily want to do that. I don't want to look at that. I um, don't want to look at that either. What I do want to look at here is this. The multiplicity of, real zero, of a real zero determines whether the graph crosses or touches. The behavior near a real zero determines how the graph crosses, touches or crosses the x-axis. So the key things here that I want you to see are <laughs> if the multiplicity is a 2 or a 4 it just multi... Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and annotate this. So I'm looking down here at... Uh, actually I'm looking at this first one. Okay, notice that, that this multiplicity is even. Even multiplicity. And I'm running out of time here on my video even multiplicity and again this is odd multiplicity odd okay and so even and odd evens don't go through the graph odds do go through the graph if the multiplicity is one multiplicity is one then we see that the the graph goes through the x-axis like that and the multiplicity of two or four or any other higher power that's even 
the graph touches the x-axis.